Hi guys, Arthur here with ONP Digital Designer, and today I want to answer the question once and for all, just how good a resolution do you get from using uh, iPhone scans versus an actual 3D scan from a scanner like say an EinScan or an Artec scan. Um, Artec and EinScans can run you several thousand dollars, whereas most of everyone already has an iPhone in their pocket. So why wouldn't you use the iPhone scanner if it's good enough, or you've been told it's good enough, or you've been told it's plus or minus one millimeter deviation from the original surface? That's certainly better than what you can do by hand, isn't it? Well, today we're going to dive in and I'm going to give you um, a really good use case and visual explanation um, so right here uh, in ZBrush, actually, where we're going to be doing this today, on exactly what each type of scan looks like and how they compare to each other. So what you're seeing on screen is one scan of um, a transfemoral uh, plaster positive with a sock put over it. Uh, it was scanned on a desk, and uh, or a vice rather, and I've cleaned it and corrected it, and moved it uh, so that it's you know all of our ortho views line up with uh, every side of the of the device. I've also done this with a bunch of other scans in here. I have probably 14 or 15 scans in this file that we're going to go through one by one. So the first three that are visible here are all done with an EinScan. So an EinScan has a plus or minus resolution rating of 0.5 to 0.3 millimeters. And if I overlay them, you can see that the there is a bit of clipping between each version. You know, there's you can see how one is it got positive deviation where it comes through and then where there is negative deviation where the, uh, the the ghosted version comes through but if you see if I if I uh, turn off the ghost and transparency and I just have all three of these scans on top of each other you can see that the seams line up between all three colors you can see that the surfaces between all three scans um, interchanges quite evenly and regularly which means that these surfaces really do sit on top of each other and you really do, at the end of the day, get a scan that is so close, especially between all three of them, that this is a trustworthy uh, reference to use when you're using digital design. And we can see that even in the seam in the cloth, um, or the side seam of uh, the, the fabric here. So this is a really good scanner, and it creates repeatable results and this is what repeatable results looks like it's, it's got good um, interchangeability between the, the intersection or the clipping of the surfaces involved so what we did next is um, I had a client submit all of these scans to me and I asked him very particularly to scan five different times uh, using his eye scan this AK socket um, plaster positive and then I asked him to use his comb scan, which he has used for a long time. He's very comfortable with the comb scan, and he actually even has his own jig for the comb scan. So I asked him to take the scan, the same scan of this device with his eye scan, and then four times using his comb scan jig, and then four times using his free hand, so that we could actually look at and compare the results. So what you're gonna see next is, I'm gonna leave one of these up as a master, so this is going to stay up, and we're going to call this the master. We're going to compare our comb scans to the EinScan scan. So first up, let's look at the first one, uh, the first scan. So this is a, this is without a jig. No, this is with the jig. So the F jig one. So if I isolate this, you can see that we get color, which is really cool. Uh, we get some poor surface detail up here. So again, you did not see that in the EinScan version, right? So we're getting this kind of geometry which can confuse and, and distort uh, some programs um, and we're also getting you know a really rough jagged edge but it's still usable we still get our surface right well look at this I particularly when I went to align this I would align the seam on the medial side I believe or is that the, that's probably the lateral side I line the, the the seam the color seam on one side and try to uh, match it to the other and that's the thing right out of the gate the color information is hugely distorted I could go through each of these um, each of these uh, scans and you can see how much the the color information is migrating around and not 
coming in reliably. So the surfaces come in um, at a different distortion rate than the color. And comb scan's color is one of its big selling points because you can mark up a plaster positive, you can mark up a patient, make cut lines, and then use that when you go to trace it out in a CAD program. But as you can see, I can quickly go through all of these color scans, and even though I've lined up the seam pretty well on one side, and that's with this, the actual uh, seam brought in through the geometry of the Ein scan, um, none of them, if you go to the other side, the other side never lines up. So that's a really big uh, concern for me because if I'm a digital technician, and at the end of the day, I'm a CAD designer or a CAD operator, I'm not a practitioner. So if a practitioner wants to communicate with me using lines or, or drawings on a, on a socket, I want to be confident that those lines are going to show up in the right place when I do, do the trim lines. Otherwise, I have to rely solely on the geometry. Um, and let's talk about the geometry. So using a jig, we can see the deviation from the uh, master, which is our Einscan, is coming in. And we actually get these large deviations. So look at that difference here. You can see the difference on the edges as we slowly rotate. So we got, that was a negative deviation. Now we've got positive deviation, a little bit of negative here, a little bit of negative here, going down to negative. And again, large deviations all of a sudden. And, you know, uncontrolled. So if we go to the next one, we get the same sort of level of deviation away from the design. So again, watch the edging here as, it, as, as I slowly rotate it. You can see that it's pretty close, it's close, but then you get these large deviations, especially on these undercuts here where the flare happens. Um, and then we go to the next one, same thing. So this is all with a jig. So the jig is supposed to help you get plus or minus one mil, but in practice, that's like at least two mil. And then in some cases, it would be even three mil. Like right here, you can see how far off those two surfaces are. Like that's three to four mil difference. So um, very interesting stuff to see, and that's with the jig. Uh, if we go to no jig, we get even wider distortion, and we get more variable distortion. The distortion happens more randomly across the surface. The jig version I noticed was that we did get a predictable deviation underneath the underhang of the flare. The underhang of the flare always seemed to take a certain level of deviation to it. So at least the deviation was consistent with the jig, however it was still substantial and larger than one millimeter. If we go to no jig, we're going to start to see deviation, again, why deviation? Three, four, five mil on some sides, um, but then spread out randomly across the device across the AK. Um, one of them, so this one, this one actually was pretty good. This one actually was probably one of the better ones. Um, here's another one. So again, large deviation near the distal end. Uh, we fly around this one. This one's actually pretty okay. Um, but again, our color information is way off. You know, even if I line up one seam on one side, that color is just sort of stretched over on the other. Um, we also did this with a BK, so if you're interested in a BK um, sort of comparison, so I can do the same thing here, uh, compare, comparing the, uh, the deviation. So again, we line up one seam on one side, and it doesn't matter, the, de the, the seam moves around a lot between each side. And uh, this one, we actually got pretty substantial deviation. Um, I fly between these here. Hmm. I mean, it's okay. It's okay. But I hope you can sort of see the difference in terms of the quality of the scan and the surface you're being captured. The quality of the color is on its own tangent altogether in terms of deviation. So if they say plus or minus one mil to the surface, you know, I would probably times that by two or three just based off of your own technique or your familiarity with the software. But other than that, um, you, the Einscan gives you actual markings for the, the rumples in the fabric, even the logos come through to a certain extent on the Einscan model, whereas you won't get any of those markings uh, when you use a comb scan. So um, it's very interesting. Um, I really appreciate uh, the time.
shout out to NY Rehab for um, you know being one of the proponents and one of the avid users of 3D scanning and 3D technology at all levels. Um, they did some amazing work here with uh, providing these scans and doing this analysis. Um, but we thought it would be prudent to share um, what we learned just by going through and looking at this deviation. Truly uh, sort of eye-opening. There's not a lot of softwares out there that can hold this kind of result to account. Um, so it's best to create a quick video about it. So uh, I hope this helps. Uh, if you have any questions about scan accuracy or you want to overlay some scans of your own, send me an email at contact at onpdigitaldesigner.com and I'd be happy to help you guys out and uh, establish uh, a baseline for your digital workflows. So talk soon.